everyone. It's uh, Kevin Lau here, and uh, I'm the community manager for Google TV. I want to welcome everyone to this Hangout. So we have a special treat for everyone. We have uh, Cozy here that's joining us for Hangout this afternoon. So if everyone could uh, maybe introduce yourselves and tell them a little bit of what you do, and then we'll kind of kick off the Hangout. Thanks, Kevin. So I'll start. Um, I'm Carol from Cozy, and uh, I run social for Cozy, and I'm a mom and I have three kids, and uh, hopefully today we'll be able to answer some questions about using Cozy. And then we have two special expert guests, and I will allow them each to introduce themselves. Maybe we'll start with Amy. Hi, um, I'm Amy, and I am also a mom. I have two little boys, and I am a heavy Cozy user. Um, besides being a mom and having to keep up with all the kid activities, I also um, work full-time for myself. Um, and I have lots of clients to keep up with and lots of different appointments. I don't work out of any one office, um, so it's a handy tool for me to be able to keep up with my work life and my home life. I'm Jacqueline, also known as Nerd Mom. I am a homeschooling mother of four, and in addition to that, I also write for the Nerd Family blogs, and kind of the same thing, got to keep up with clients I have and my very crazy home life and my husband's work life, so... I love Cozy. Very cool. Well, uh, welcome to the Hangout. So um, as just kind of a, a starter question to get things going, uh, maybe what you guys would do is you know, tell people what is Cozy, if they've never heard of it, never used it before. OK, I'll start, um, obviously, since I uh, work for Cozy. Um, Cozy is an app for families. It's web-based, and also there are mobile apps. And it is a group of tools based on a calendar, but also including to-do lists, grocery lists, meal planning, and a family journal. And the idea is to have everything that a family needs organized all in one place. And it works, um, everything is in the cloud, so no matter where you log in, whether it's from your computer or your um, mobile apps, so maybe you have an iPhone or you have an Android phone, we even have apps for BlackBerry, um, anybody from the family can log in at any time, and since it's all in the cloud, uh, all the data is live. And that's how Cozy works. Very cool. So maybe you could talk about, um, I know you mentioned a bunch of different platforms, but um, especially for families, you know, the living room is such a, a central component for family life. And maybe you could kind of talk about how you decided to create an app for Google TV. And right. And talk about that a little bit. Right. And um, yeah, that's one of the reasons why we thought it would be fun to do this Hangout is that Cozy has just finished optimizing for Google TV, and a lot of families are changing the way they use their TV. You know, it used to just be this passive device that you would sit in front of, but now with all these new technologies, there are great ways that you can use the TV as a computer and um, keep track of what you need to do. So um, TV is a big part of the family life, and having a way to see everything that you need in front of you um, is what Google TV offers, and we thought that was really exciting. And Cozy in particular has um, some features that you might want to see while your whole family is doing stuff around the house. So, for example, your meal plan. Um, you might want to be able to see what you have planned for dinner that night, and instead of everybody bugging mom about it, um, they just can log into Cozy and see what's on the calendar for that night. Um, also, the family journal is a really interesting feature in Cozy, which is a way to just jot down a quick memory of what might have happened that day, and you can add a picture to it. And on a full screen TV, it's really fun to see um, everybody can flip sort of what you might think of as your family album, flip through it and see the little comments that uh, mom or dad maybe jotted down when you were younger. And as you get older, the teens can add um, and log into Cozy and add their own comments too. So we think that's a really kind of unique thing that looks particularly good in the Google TV environment. Very cool. So it's definitely meant for, you know, people on the go and, and interacting with the rest of your family. So I'm curious to get the take from, you know, the two of you guys that are power users and how you use it, especially you have your own businesses, you have, you know, families, of course. How do you, how do you use Cozy yourself? And, you know, I know that uh, Carol mentioned a bunch of different uh, features. So maybe you guys could talk about some of the stuff that you use it Jacqueline, for. Jacqueline, you want to go first on that, and then we'll jump to Amy? Sure. I am... Um of course, the base starts with, you know, you can color code out your calendar. And my husband loves the fact that he can access it from work and see not only, you know, it's kind of that idea of what is his stuff, but in reality it's what's the stuff the kids have to go to versus the stuff that I'm just going to. And even down to the point that I use it as my editorial calendar for my blogs. Um, we 
use that a lot. And our, one of our favorite things, frankly, is the grocery list. You know, my husband works behind a Costco. I don't know if you guys have Costco out in Arkansas, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's that idea of, I know I wasn't planning a grocery trip, but he can go look and see what it is when he's got a few extra minutes and just wants to hop in. So it's been great for us, including the fact we can see it on every device we have. Yeah, I would think that that, that would be a great, you know, use case. I mean, especially if you're a shopping list, right? Everyone usually typically writes it down and they forget about it. Or, exactly. you know, they, they might forget the milk at home or, or something. Oh, but yeah. The very best part of the shopping list feature, though, is that it updates in real time. So right. if I've already left to go to the store, my husband's at the store, and we forgot to add something to the list, you don't have to call. You don't have to panic yeah. that they're going to forget it. All you do is you update on list, whether I'm sitting in front of my computer or I'm on my phone or mm -hmm. the kids have the iPad. I say, oh, hop on there real fast and add Capri Suns, and it updates in real time. And so it, there's no more are we doing multiple runs to the grocery store because we forgot stuff. The shopping lists are so cool. Being able, like I said, the, the real-time activity cross-platforms is fantastic with this app. That's one of the main things that sold me on it. I have to say, that's so interesting. One of the ways um, I've seen it be very useful is in the real-time world <laughs> is um, if, if you have to go to several stores, so I know like a lot of times my husband will do the grocery shopping on Saturday and he needs to go to Costco and then he needs to go to Trader Joe's and then he needs to make a stop at the produce market. Mm -hmm. And I can tell by looking at what's ticked off which store he's in. Yeah. So if I, get, I can see what's yeah. been ticked off and say, oh, he's already left Costco, so no point in adding something to that list. But he's still at Trader Joe's, so I can put stuff on while he's still there. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I can even see that, oh, you know, Nick's already, he's already through with the produce section. He's onto the frozen foods. I still have time to add frozen pizza really fast. Right. <laughs> that's pretty neat. So it actually will we'll kind of check it off your list once you, you've, you've gone to that place and the location. Yeah. Right. It's very nice. And the, I know there's a feature called um, Shared Family Password. Maybe you guys could talk a little bit about what that is. Well, it isn't actually a feature. It's the nature of Cozy. So, um so what you do, uh, one thing that people get a little confused about when they first sign up is the idea that everyone has the same password. So you log in with your own email address, but that one common family password. So let's say your family password is 123. So dad at gmail.com is going to use password 123. Mom at gmail.com is going to use password 123. And that's how you make sure everybody's looking at the same account. Cool. So it's important to understand that when you're setting up your account. Right. I think so. And I think you mentioned this a little bit earlier. So it also syncs with uh, different calendars, so like Google Calendar and Outlook and all the others. Right. So um, sync is a. I'm not sure I would describe it as sync, but it works well with other calendars. So Cozy is mm -hmm. designed so you can import a Google Calendar, or maybe if some people still ask us about a Yahoo Calendar, or maybe their iCal. So you can um, grab the feed from any other calendar that ends in a .ics file and you can bring that into Cozy so you can see them both at the same time and you can also export your Cozy calendar to another calendar. So let's say dad is a devoted Google Calendar user and mom likes Cozy, just as an example. Neither person has to give up the calendar they like because you can share the data back and forth. And we understand also that maybe somebody has Google Calendar at work and they want to be able to keep everything for work on Google Calendar and maybe everything for their family life on Cozy. And we designed it so that both calendars will work together. Very nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested to learn a little bit more about, um, you know, the meal planning and, and how that is really beneficial for moms. I mean, I would think that there's a lot of users that would, you know, that would be a great tool just, just for being able to plan out your, you know, the week schedule of all the different plans or meal plans you have. So I'm interested to see what, how, how you guys use it. Anybody want to take that first? I can take it. Um, I've done it. One of the nice things is you can add a great little button to your bar um, because I do run a food blog. Instead of having to enter my recipes, I can just pick them up off my blog and it adds them to Cozy. Oh, cool. And then um, I can assign them to a certain day and it gives me the option of adding the ingredients to my grocery list. So you don't have to do that whole, okay, you've planned these you know, five meals but didn't bother to make a grocery list on it, so you've got to try to remember those things. So that's been really convenient, and I've also, um, I love to try out new recipes at least once a week, if not once every couple weeks, and I can just drop those recipes in from the website, so I don't have to end up doing a lot of data entry or anything like that, because life's just too busy for me. 
Yeah, I mean, that that's very cool. I mean, be able to integrate all these different components. Right. One of the unique things about the way the Cozy Meal Planner works is that you have this family recipe box, and you're not obligated to stick with one website. Like, you don't have to use only the Cozy recipes in that box. We do provide an easy way to download recipes from the Cozy site, but you can grab them from any recipe that you find on the web and we have a little widget that you just stick on your toolbar and it, you click on it, it says add to cozy meals and um, once you've got all of your meals saved in your family recipe box it's a simple drag and drop action into a meal planner so you've got a calendar for the week and you say okay today I'm making macaroni and cheese and tomorrow I'm making whatever fancy recipe I found on of a blog or maybe it's from all recipes or food TV and you just drag that in and then maybe the next night you're thinking oh it's swim team night so I better just do takeout because I'm not going to have time to cook you can just type in manually so you can either add recipes manually you can add what you're having and then at the end you just click and you've got this nice family meal plan laid out for the week so instead of getting home at 5 or 5.30 and thinking gosh what the heck am I going to put on the dinner table today you've already got that planned and what's really nice is what, if you do your meal plan say once a week then when you make your grocery list you can look at your meal plan and say what do I need for this week so that you don't find yourself on Thursday thinking oh I don't have the ingredients for this meal that I had planned to make for tonight because you'll always have it organized. Very cool. Uh, I have to say that if I ever actually cooked it would be a great favorite drink. <laughs> but, um, you know, I have I have recipes in my recipe box, and I look at them from time to time and think, boy, that sounds great. I want to try that one day. And I have actually a couple of times added it to my um, to my shopping list. But what we do, um, there is a really um, cool messages feature in Cozy where you can just kind of send a message back and forth to your family. Well, what we do is we actually keep uh, takeout menus and preferences and contact information in our family message center. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. We have, like, we have um, for our favorite restaurants, we have the name, we have their phone number, and um, I, I will copy paste some of the menu stuff that we like the most, and I'll put everybody's preferences, like at this one restaurant, I like the chef salad, the kids like the pizza, and my husband likes the tamales. And so we, I can just send a message to my husband, you know, hey, we're busy, want to pick up, um, you know, something from, you know, a certain restaurant on the way home, and he can pull it right up. He has their phone number, knows where they are, and knows what everybody likes. So we can mm. kind of keep all that. And so that's our little milk planning <laughs> option and cozy. Oh, I've got to do that because I'm tired of my husband <laughs> calling me and going, what is it we want from there again? Yeah, but that's it is a family message center. It's perfect, and everybody has it. I have to yeah. say that's such an original use of the family message center. I don't think I've ever heard that use case before, so yeah. I'm going to share that around. Yeah, that's actually really cool because I know, you know, like some people, they just don't like to cook or, you know, they're so busy, yeah, and I think that would make it so much easier, mm -hmm. especially when you have so many people in the family that have different, you know, choices yeah. and what they like to eat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, very cool. Oh yeah, um, just taking a Taco Bell order for us is a is an accomplishment <laughs> with six people. Yeah. <laughs> so you you talked about the the recipes. What what kind of recipes have you tried so far um, from the cozy you know recipe files? Um, I'll take that first because I can tell you that um, there's this one recipe. It's Greek tilapia, and I mean think about a recipe that's harder to sell kids on than fish with spinach and tomatoes and feta cheese, but I got to tell you, this recipe has been such a hit with my kids. We now make it at least once a week, and I know a recipe is a hit when my husband gets the ingredients without me putting it on the grocery <laughs> list. Like, even if I don't put the ingredients for that recipe on the list, he shows up with them, so I know he really wants me to make that dish. Um, that's a really popular recipe, and um, we actually have on the Cozy content area, which is called Live Simply, and it's part of Cozy.com. Um, we have the 25 most popular um, dinner recipes among cozy families, so you can um, go on there really easily and download them. And what I think is interesting about that section is there's such a variety compared to um, what you would expect. You know, it's not all one kind of food. So there's quinoa with curried vegetables, and then there's teriyaki vegetables with rice, and then there's you know a kind of a couple of classic Tex-Mex recipes. And then, of course, we've got that Greek tilapia and a cozy classic chicken. So those are some of the recipes that you'll see. And in your cozy recipe box, those come preloaded so that even if you don't really have an idea of where you want to start, we kind of guarantee if you try these, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Very cool. Um, so the next question I had is, 
how does the Cozy Journal work, and how does it compare with like other photo sharing sites out there, like you know Instagram, Facebook, or even your personal blog? Um, I don't know if either of you use the Cozy Journal, so I'll wait and first see, and if not, then I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, I'm just really starting looking at it. Yeah, yeah so I, I just started looking at it. But part of the nice thing for us is it's conference season for me right now, and we kind of have a rule. We don't put our children on Twitter or on um, the blogs at all. So it's a nice thing for, you know, my husband and I back and forth in He's infamous for just taking a quick picture with his tablet of the kids doing something crazy or a little video. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's nice because it is private. Mm -hmm. You know, my children are so young, I don't want to uh, give them that digital footprint that they haven't decided to have yet. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It is, um, it is incredibly private when you compare it to any social network. Um, you know, we're not so worried about putting our kids online. I don't mind that so much. But still, there are, you know, messages that are just for our family, and we want to keep track of them. We want to be able to save them, but I don't want them saved on Facebook. Um, you know, even though my profile is private, I know better. Nothing online is really that private. But to me, um, the journal section is one of the safest, most private places to share some of that information that you really wouldn't want getting out there. Right, and the journal is designed to be as private as any of the other data on Cozy. So um, we have very high levels of security around your calendar and your to-do list and your grocery list, and the same high level of security is associated with our journal. So it only gets shared if you want it to be shared, and even in the environment of sharing, it's you, what you would do is you can set it up so that it gets emailed, let's say, to grandma or grandpa on a regular basis. And let's face it, a lot of grandma and grandpas are still not on Facebook, and even if they are, they're definitely not going to go check your blog. So um, yeah. e email is the one thing that you know everyone's using. Even grandma and grandpa use email. So you can send them a private family journal that no one else will see, and what I find very convenient about the journal, and I have to say, it took me a while to figure out how to make it very useful for my family, but I write down kind of the small things in life there. So, for example, when my kids were little, they used to mix up words, and they love hearing about that. Like when you tell your kid, when you were little, you used to call the kitchen a chicken, or you used to call the ketchup a checkup, you know, that kind of small family memory that's really only interesting to you and maybe your very immediate family. You're not going to put that on Facebook, or at least you shouldn't, and um, you can jot that down and take a quick snapshot of your child and put that in your family journal, and maybe it doesn't seem like a huge big deal at the time, but then when your kids are five or six or ten years old, you look back on that and they love those kind of small family memories, and that's exactly what the journal is great for. So you can put everything in there from, you know, a photo of the first day of school and what your kid said on that first day of school. You know, people always take that first day of school photo. We've seen it again and again. It's one of the most popular things that families like to take. But then what do you do with it? If you put it on Facebook, it's kind of buried there forever. But if you put it in your family journal, imagine throwing that up on your Google TV and you can all look at it together. That would be such a fun way to spend the evening, just looking back over your family journal in front of your Google TV. Yeah, I would think so too. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take some questions uh, that people have posted on the stream. So this question is from Richard Hoffer, and he has two questions for Cozy. Um, so he said, after I spent only 10 minutes with their site, creating an account, creating a calendar item, and creating a to-do list with about six items, what's your strongest pitch to me about using your web mobile system for sticking with Google Calendar and task to-dos, which are accessible by web and mobile? So that's the first question. Okay, well, I, I, in some cases, it's not necessarily an either-or. I mean, Cozy is designed so that you can use it in conjunction with Google Calendar if that's what's most useful for you. Um, and that's why we created this feature where you can export your Cozy feed out to Google Calendar and also import from Google Calendar into Cozy if you want to. Um, but beyond that, also, there's really good integration in Cozy between the to-dos and your calendar. So, for example, if you um, have something on your to-do list and you jot down a date right after it. So let's say on June 17th, I need to remember to pay a particular bill. I can write pay the Comcast bill and then um, you just use it in the month, day, year format. And so it would be 06 slash 17 slash 12. You have to do it in that format. And then it automatically drops that task onto your calendar for that day. And it's just a super fast and easy way to add that information right from one thing to the other uh, with no extra effort involved. And a lot of families find that that's very useful. 
Very nice. Um, and so this is a question from Michelle Greenlee. Um, so it's not so much a question, but a suggestion. So if, if you guys are taking suggestions. Um, so she would she asks, um, I would like to see uh, more Android widgets. So calendar widgets to be exact, smaller borders around the widget itself would mean more info is visible. And then also a weekly meal planner widget would be fantastic too. Showing the week's menu would be a great time saver. So just some ideas in, in the future. Right. So um, we do look very carefully at all of the suggestions that are left in our various social channels. And I did notice that suggestion today. And I will be sure to pass that along to our product development team. Um, one thing that does differentiate Cozy from a lot of other um, digital calendars is that we do have a very active social presence. And you can leave comments for us in any of the channels. And every single one of them is looked at, responded to, and then included in our product development plans. Yeah, I can, I can attest to that as a longtime user that every time I've ever had a question about, you know, maybe what's, what's going to come along, or would you add this feature, or this would be really handy, or hey, this isn't working right now, it doesn't matter where I go, Twitter, Facebook, email, you know, their website, I have an answer and I have it fast, and I can think of specific features that I've actually mentioned that they then brought out in, in the next update or upgrade. So they really, the customer service is fantastic, and they really do listen to the users. Nice. Thanks. So as a, as a follow-up, uh, Michelle also asked, um, is all data from Cozy available for export if you need to? No. So um, the data that you can export from Cozy would be your calendar data. Um, so if you want to send, say, your calendar data to another calendar, you can do that. And it's completely private. Um, but there is no way to export, for example, your to-do list or your grocery list. You can access them from the app anywhere. And you can access them from any computer. But there's no way to actually send that to, a, let's say, a, you know, an Excel spreadsheet or something. Right. OK, great. So I know we're um, just at uh, 2 o'clock, so I know we're going to wrap up very soon. Um, just one other question is, what, what's in store for Cozy in the future? If you have any updates that you can let our users know about, any new things that are planning that you can... Yeah, I, I'm really well? excited to announce we just, about two hours ago, posted on our blog that multiple reminders are here. A lot of Cozy users have been asking us if they could set more than one reminder on a particular appointment, and that is not a feature we had in the past. And we have now added that. So we're super excited about that. And some of the other features we're considering are things like a month view in the app. That's another thing that a lot of um, Cozy users have been asking for, and we're looking very seriously at that. And then one final thing we're looking very seriously at, and we hope to have, is uh, on-device notifications. So you would have a choice. Right now, when you get your reminders in Cozy, you have a choice between a text message and an email. But many Cozy users have been saying, hey, I'd really like to get that as what people think of as a push notification. And um, we are looking very seriously at adding that soon. So those are some of the things we are looking at doing. Those are great. Yeah. Awesome. So um, as we wrap up, uh, Carol or anyone else on, on the Hangout, uh, is there anything else you'd like to leave? our audience with before we wrap up? Um, I will last, so I'll let each one of you say what you've got going on. Um, I will say, I, I have one other recommendation. Um, you know, we've used the word family a hundred times here today. Um, but I recommend Cozy as an app to all different kinds of people. And some of the uh, biggest users that I know are actually um, younger people who have roommates. Um, they they aren't necessarily in such intimate contact with their roommates as a family member actually is. And so it's been very beneficial for them. They can get all their roommates together in a shared account. They can update shopping lists together. They can let everybody know, you know, when they're going to be out of town. Um, you know, because sometimes depending on your interest levels, your job schedule, you and your roommates are ships passing in the night. But I know a lot of younger people that have absolutely loved this app to stay connected with their roommates um, but without having to discuss discuss all the little details, you know, who's going to buy milk, you know, that kind of thing. So okay. they, they really loved it. Don't think that just because it says family, it's only for families. It's not. Any group of people that needs to have shared lists, shared calendars can really, really benefit from this app. Nice. Kind of just to, to go hand in hand with what Amy was saying, because my husband was kind of like, okay, great. So it's some girly 
mom app, wonderful. <laughs> you just tell me what I need to know. And he has really um, come to appreciate it. I mean, mm -hmm. he has it as a widget on his Android tablet all the time, and I carry it on my iPad. And it really has been a very efficient tool, not just some fluffy, mommy kind of family app. It's something that both of us are pretty hardcore, you know, computer users have really enjoyed. I thought it was going to take a lot for me to really want to leave Google Calendar. And while I love it, this is a much more well-integrated experience for us. Yeah, and my husband loves it because it means no more nagging. I don't have to call him a hundred times to tell him to do something. It goes on his to-do list. I can set up a reminder. He doesn't even have to hear my voice, and I swear it's helped our marriage because of that. <laughs> <laughs> we love to hear it. That's actually, you know, part of our mission statement is for families to actually communicate better because of the tools. And one thing that's very interesting is in many cases we find that it's the dad who discovers Cozy first, although um, very often it's the mom who ends up managing a lot of the schedules within it, but we do find in many cases dad is the um, initial discoverer of the app. And um, I did want to leave you with one final thing, which is an initiative that we're launching that's going to go from now all the way through October. And I think, um, Amy, you might find this particularly interesting. It's an initiative we're calling America Makes Dinner, and we're doing it in partnership with the Partnership for a Healthier America. And um, what we're doing is we're saying, wouldn't it be fun if we all cooked the same dish on one night? So think about like if everybody watches American Idol one night or if everybody does watches um, some big TV show and then you talk about it the next day around the water cooler. So we thought it would be really fun if everybody cooked the same dish one night. And we're going to figure out what that dish is by having a lot of um, chefs who have already agreed to come on board. And each week they're giving us a recipe to share with families. And the criteria is that the recipe has to be fast and affordable and reasonable for any typical family to make and then um, by the end by the time we get to October we're going to have narrowed down which recipe is going to be the recipe that everybody makes together and we're giving families all the tools they need to do that so the grocery list and the meal planning and we encourage everybody to check out the content area of cozy.com and check out um, America makes dinner and maybe join it it's one meal a week to take a look at in the beginning but over time if you resolve to maybe cook a little bit more at home this is easy and affordable and all the recipes are by um, either food bloggers or chefs that have been selected um, with us and with Partnership for Healthier America. Cool. Awesome. Well, uh, definitely let us know when that um, when you guys work that out. Yeah, that's already live. So you can just go uh, to okay. americamakesdinner.com and it's already live. Great. Well, um, thanks again, everyone, for uh, for joining us on this hangout. Uh, definitely appreciate it. And um, this will be made available for recording. So if anyone would like to watch the replay. It will be available on our Google Plus page. Thanks again. Uh, we'll see you guys in the next Hangout. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.